Thank you so much uh, for being here with us today. And for those of you joining us virtually, uh, I'm Yuli Bayraktari. I'm the CEO of the Special Competitive Studies Project. Welcome to the Global Emerging Technology Summit. The purpose of today's summit is to bring together government and private sector leaders from the United States with our closest allies and partners to ensure that emerging technologies help advance freedom, strengthen democracies, and protect the rules-based order. Given the packed house this morning, it looks like we have a lot of friends committed to the cause. I do see a contest for the future of technology, geopolitics, and democracy playing out right now. We want to build an agenda to win these futures, and we want everybody to help. Many of us here, including Bob Work, Eric Schmidt, and the team, previously worked with the National Security Commission on AI. We got to the end of that journey and realized we were only at the beginning of the beginning. We believe the steps our country needs to take to harness AI for national advantage require further work. And we realized AI was only one of the constellation of technologies that needed some dedicated focus through the lens of national security and national competitiveness. The Special Competitive Studies Project is our idea to carry the work forward. Our mission is to make recommendations for strengthening America's long-term competitiveness for a future where AI and other emerging technologies reshape our economy, society, and ultimately our national security. We were inspired by a project led by Dr. Henry Kissinger, led in the 1950s, called the Special Studies Project. Facing challenges of a similar magnitude in the midst of the Cold War and technological disruption, Nelson Rockefeller organized the SSP to be a bipartisan effort to help America build a new strategy. They warned that if America did not shape events with its own sense of purpose, it would be engulfed, shaped by events by others. SESP believes the United States could benefit from building such a sense of purpose today. On Monday, we released our first initial report, Mid-Decade Challenges to National Competitiveness, and it's available on our website at SESP.ai. It's a 200-page document, and if you know our work from the AI Commission, that's short. The report provides our initial effort to outline a purpose and what we must do to win the technology competition. David Ignatius was right when he wrote earlier this week about the report that it paints a grim picture of a future where China, not democracies, control the technologies that shape our world. However, the report and our work is fundamentally optimistic. Many of the critical developments will happen between 2025 and 2030, which means if we act now, we shape the future, harness emerging technologies to strengthen democracies, improve our citizens' health and well-being, and build a safer world. I do see this window because we live in Washington through budget cycles. And we only have one between now and 2025 to set the conditions for the rest of the decade. Throughout my career, I was really fortunate to, to learn from some of the greatest leaders we have in our country on national security. And some of them are in the audience today. Bob Work, Nadia Shadlow, Mac Thornberry, Michelle Flournoy, and as well as my old boss, General McMaster. And most of all, <clears throat> I want to thank Eric for his vision and determination to help the United States recognize the stakes of technology competition and help the nation organize to win. Last week, I had an inspiring conversation with Dr. Kissinger preparing for a panel we're going to have later today. And he said, ideas about relaunching a special studies project have been around for many years but it takes courage and vision to do it. And Eric has both, and I agree. Eric also just returned from Ukraine and will be providing closing remarks reflecting from his visit. And finally, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna thank the SESP staff. This is the best staff I've ever worked with. This event would have not been possible without the endless support from the team who have spent countless hours until midnight last night putting this event together. So please, a round of applause for the SESP team. Uh, today's agenda, as you noticed, it's packed with seven minutes of Slack, as I noticed earlier. And we have many, many speakers joining us in person, in virtual and pre-recorded remarks. So we're going to march forward with just, just one lunch break. So bear with us during the transition between panels. Take note of all the emergency exits, silence your phone, and most importantly, let's have a great day.